Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jean Max Lima, and joining me today is Andy Davies, the director of Data X Connects, as well as host of the Inside Data Center Podcast. Um, Andy, welcome to JSA. Um, I hope you've been keeping well um, over the last 18, 24 months with everything that's going on in the world. Um, as we turn the page on 2021 and walk into 2022, I'm hopefully a bit more hopeful of what's in, the, in store for the future. Um, if we look into data centers, what are the major trends that you see for our market? Afternoon. Thanks for having me on first. Um, I think from a trends perspective, a lot of people will talk about the usual trends that you're hearing and, and what a lot of my guests talk about on the podcast. ESG, as we briefly mentioned before we come online, the fact there's going to be more hyperscale projects, I think, in 2022 because a lot were delayed in 2021. Challenges around power, new regions coming into the market. There's a lot of standard topics, but personally, I'll switch it towards the recruitment side because obviously that's what I do day in, day out. I think a lot more investment into learning, development uh, and training is what we'll see in, in 2022. A lot of the operators and the companies that we work with are now starting to say that that is one of their key priorities going forward to ensure they can create the workforce to sustain the growth. Hmm. Uh, and if we, I mean, th those are really good trends and um, things we can only change for better once we start paying attention to those things. But uh, what will be the biggest challenges? Um, because this also brings a lot of challenges, um, including on the talent side of things uh, and um, how things are done probably also need to change a little bit. Um, so what do you foresee as challenges for operators for next year? Again, most of the discussions I have are obviously around talent. So around how can we attract people? How can we recruit people? How can we retain people? You know, there's a big piece around the talent and the industry at the moment. There's obviously a huge skill shortage across the world as well. You know, within Europe, it is a major challenge at the moment. Um, and there's a number of different facets around why. You've got the issue of new entry level people coming into the sector you know we need to attract more at that level where do we find them how can we get them into the industry you've got trying to attract from other sectors so what can we do as a sector to bring more people into the data center sector and then retention is a huge piece you know there's not enough of us in the industry as it is so what we don't want to be doing is losing people to to other sectors so it's a big challenge for the data center sector to ensure that it's the sector of choice within engineering, IT and construction, and that we are actually investing and really working with a strategy to attract and retain people in the, in the data center industry. Hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, if there was one thing that you look, um, if you look at operators today, if there's one thing they are doing completely wrong, and if you could change tomorrow, you would change it um, based on what you just said, what would it be to, to make this a better place for people to stay um, and retain talent in the, the industry? From a retention point of view, a lot, a lot of the conversations we would have with, with engineers or people working for operators is, is, is a stress. It's a very stressful job. Um, you know, they're, they're operating in a, in a critical role, 24-7 you know, shifts, etc. They, they, they really need to be on point all the time. So if a candidate is coming to us potentially to look for a new opportunity, a lot of the time it is because they just feel that there's too much pressure on them. So I think having those conversations with your employees around, you know, work-life balance, you know, are they happy in their role? Can they conduct their role to a, to a high level with the stress of the, of the position? And, and just remembering that they are people, they have a life outside of work and, and ensuring that as a company, or whether you're an operator or another organisation, you are putting a real focus on, on ensuring that, you know, your company's a nice place to work, you're looking after your staff and, and you're checking in with them. You know, don't forget to have those conversations with your employees. Mental health being very important, um, especially in the days that we live in, even more important um, as a lot of people work from home. Uh, but let's talk about um, your business. So Data X Connect. Um, tell us a little bit about the business and what is the roadmap for 2022? Yeah, no problem. So Data X Connect, we're a data center talent provider, um, recruitment company. The brand was established uh, around 18 months ago. We, we, we created the brand during COVID, like you do. You know, I think sometimes you need a challenge to actually uh, kind of realise that you need to change things. So, so we use that time wisely. Um, but we've been doing data centre recruitment for around five years. We were just doing it under a different banner. What our, I guess what our goal is, or, or my goal is, I want to create a global leader in data centre recruitment with a huge focus on customer service. 
You know, I want our clients and our candidates to work with us because we give an excellent service. And that's, that's really what our core focus is and, and what we're built around. Um, as regards to what we do, you know, we operate globally. We, we recruit across the world now. The majority of our business at the moment is in Europe. We also recruit in the US and Asia. Uh, and we recruit with all levels of, of the data center spectrum from the owner operators, the, you know, the acquisition companies, all the way down to you know, your contractors and your consultants building the facility. So I guess we've got quite a good view of the market. You know, we are in all regions, we can see what's happening and we try and position ourselves as that company that can try and work with the client to solve their talent problem, whether that's retention, attraction, looking for more diverse candidates, whatever it may be. I was going to ask in terms of the the, the jobs that you've got on offer uh, or you're recruiting for, have you seen a shift over the last, let's say 18 months, even just since you started, uh, based on your previous experience as well, have you seen a shift on um, what people are looking for in terms like, are they looking more for real estate people, for um, acquisition people? Is it engineering jobs that's really on demand, high demand now? Um, what kind of shift have you seen in terms of, of specific roles? I think the, someone asked me this question earlier in the week as well. I think the main challenge for majority of operators at the moment is engineers. Um, and this is largely just because of the sheer number, the increase in number of data centers. So if you look to the London region, as an example, you know, they might, they have, they're, they're pushing up to a gigawatt of data centers now. And, and obviously that increases the, the, the amount of engineers needed, but those engineers are not there because <laughs> the data center engineers in that region are already employed in other data centers. So what you're finding is that the operators are having to look a bit outside of the box to try and attract those engineers. And you know, where can we get them from? What attributes are we looking for? Rather than specifically saying, I need someone with five years data center experience. So we've seen that as a lot. And obviously sales opportunities have been quite big this year. Again, as capacity increases, the operators obviously need to fill that space. So they're looking for more sales staff. And But generally it is, everything and in the majority of locations at the moment okay um just a quick side question because you mentioned for example london and coming up to one gigabyte in the shorts of engineers have you seen brexit having any impact on talent shortage already no not at all to be honest the only the only impact we've seen from from brexit is more around the travel restrictions um okay so for the the contractors building the facilities there was a there was a large talent pool in the uk which was flying in and out of Netherlands, Sweden, you know, Norway, wherever the facility was. And obviously that is now more difficult because they have to secure a visa. So you saw a bit of a delay with regards to that situation and solving that problem. But from a you know, capacity or development perspective, the UK market is busier now than it's ever been. I think that could be a positive impact of Brexit, to be honest, because there, there is obviously a lot of organisations looking to bring their data into the UK rather than holding it in the, in the EU. Um, but within Europe, again, we've not really seen a slowdown in development in, in any countries. We've probably seen an increase in development outside of the usual flat D markets, you know, pushing into the new territories and, and new regions. Hmm. Okay. Um, and Andy, tell me about the Inside Data Center podcast. When did it start? Why did you start it? Um, gives a bit, of, uh, a bit of juice from behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. So, again, the Inside Data Center podcast started around... July 2020, I think. I have to look at my date to realise what year we're in. It's been such a crazy 18 months. So the reason why I started it was I, I listened to a lot of podcasts. I enjoy podcasts. Um, and I just got frustrated with the industry not sharing its stories. There were so many great people in the sector, so many great things happening, but everybody was hidden behind this. You have to sign an NDA. We're not allowed to talk about it, you know, type um, curtain. So I wanted to give people the opportunity, a platform to talk about their career and how they've developed in the industry with the hope that that would attract more people into the sector because they then understand that you don't have to be an engineer. There are opportunities in sales, marketing, you know, there's some really clever people in the sector. There's opportunities across the globe. So there was a number of things, but the main reason was let's talk about it. Let's share some stories and, and get the exposure of the sector up from something that we all did, but, Nobody was allowed to talk about it of anyone except the people within the uh, within the magic circle. Hmm. Uh, I, th I think you've done about sixty episodes so far. So, what's been the um, what is the highlight? What's the main one? What's the one that really stuck with you um, until now? 
I think I've, it's a great question. I've recorded some brilliant ones. And I said to someone the other day, I should probably look back and listen to them because, you know, you record them and you don't really listen back to them a lot of the time, apart from when you're editing it. So there's, I've done some with some amazing people, you know, like um, Jim Collinson, CEO of Nautilus, um, Aligned. I've done a couple of Aligned Energy in the States, which is a great company. Matt Pullins, uh, Cyrus One, you know, CEO in, in Europe. Um, I recorded one last week with, um, which comes out this week with Chad Harris, who's a Windstone data center, is building a Bitcoin mining data center in Texas. You know, so there's so many different stories. And then there's, I recorded one a long time ago with Jack Harris, who's a recent graduate, just started in the sector. There's so many different people and different stories. And, and until you speak to them and find out their career, you don't really know what you're getting. So you've got the two extremes, I guess, those technical geniuses that, you just listen to and and the entrepreneurs like Mike Tobin who you could talk to all day and learn so much about mm. to the people that are actually just started in the industry and finding out why they're there what brought them there you know and, and how from their perspective how we can attract more people so yeah. I wouldn't like to say one because one of my guests might be watching and I don't want to have a favorite but there's some amazing episodes and I think you know just the opportunity to talk to these people is is, is really benefited my knowledge and Hopefully, it's helped to helped a few other people as well. It always does. It's amazing to see what's happening in the industry. Um, and as we were saying before we came on um, on camera as well, we're talking about um, the new faces um, coming into the sector, especially during COVID. Uh, and we can't wait to go back to an event, real life event, um, and hopefully not know fifty percent of the people there. <laughs> They'll be amazing. <laughs> exactly. And I always say, like you know, it'd be great to just hire a pub and just have everyone in the pub in London or wherever it is in the world, and just have a chat about the sector because you know, there's so many great people in it. Everyone wants to help each other. We all want to talk about it, um, but it's been difficult to get that platform to, to do it face to face. And hopefully, you know, I said this last year, but hopefully next year we, we can definitely do it. Hopefully next year, definitely we should do it. And <laughs> let's hope that things get better uh, from here. Uh, but Andy, thank you so much for your time. Um, and thank you to our viewers as well for tuning into JSA TV and JSA podcasts. And don't forget to check our social channels for more content. Until next time, happy networking.